Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on differential equations. This is video number 20, and it's the first video on the subset on Laplace's equation. Specifically, I'm going to introduce Laplace's equation and discuss one of its properties, one of the more important properties. So before we discuss Laplace's equation, it's best to discuss another equation called Poisson's equation. So if we take the Laplacian of a function, I'm going to call the function v, so it's the Laplacian of a, of a scalar, and we get a constant. We call this particular equation Poisson's equation. Now, Poisson's equation is a very important equation. It's seen all over physics. For example, it's seen in uh, electromagnetism. To give a simple example, if you look at the magnetic vector potential, capital A, capital A a function of R, we'll say. And if we take the, take the Laplacian of this, it's equal to minus the permeability of free space multiplied by the volume current density. So here what we have is a constant. Now it doesn't matter what the constant is, in this particular case we have a constant, and this is called Poisson's equation. And we see it all over all over physics. So it's a very important uh, uh, equation. Now, we're able to make a simplification of this particular equation. And with this simplification, we come up with what's known as Laplace's equation. So instead of having the Laplacian of your scalar equal to a constant, you have the Laplacian of your scalar equal to zero. So this is a homogeneous equation, where Poisson's equation is a non-homogeneous equation. So this is Laplace's equation. So I said a moment ago that Poisson's equation is very important and it's seen all over physics, engineering and so on. Well, Laplace's equation is equally important. And the reason is as follows. As you can probably imagine, Laplace's equation is a simplification of Poisson's equation. So to give, a, to give another example, once again from electromagnetism, we're able to write using Gauss's law the electric potential as follows. So we take the second, or excuse me, the Laplacian of the electric potential, which is actually given by the placeholder V, and that's equal to rho over epsilon zero. Doesn't really matter what they are. Well, we just just we have the charge density and the permittivity of free space. Now, of course, this is a non-homogeneous equation, and therefore it is Poisson's equation. And it's a difficult equation to solve. But sometimes we're lucky and we're in regions of space where the charge density is zero. And as a result, we get Laplace's equation. So Laplace's equation can be used to solve your, for your electric potential. And just in case you've, you're, you're not convinced as to why this is important, well, your electric potential gives you your electric field. And your electric field is something that drives all of the electronics uh, that are around us. Your electro electromagnetism, is, electromagnetism is what does that. So that's what Laplace's equation looks like. And yeah, right. So now before we talk about anything more about La Laplace's equation, I quickly like to discuss the solution of Poisson's equation. Now, many equations uh, will have solutions and you can manipulate those solutions. Sorry, all, the sol all equations will have some form of a solution but sometimes you can manipulate the solution in a very clever way. So let's just look at Poisson's equation again. I'm going to just take it as Gauss's law for electric fields. Now, I'm going to tell you that the solution to, to uh, Poisson's equation, just to write it up one more, the solution to Poisson's equation is as follows. It's one over four pi, then you multiply that by a constant. And then you have a volume integral of your sources divided by your separation constant, the magnitude of your separation vector, excuse me, and then integrate that, like I said, over your volume. Now, your separation would be, just very quickly, if I wanted to find out, if I was an observer up here, and I want to find out the electric field due to lots of charges over here, well, the separation would be this particular, it would be this particular one here. 
this would be the separation vector. Anyway, so that's how you solve Poisson's equation. Now, you can use separation of variables, something I'll speak about in, in later videos, no problem. But this is a very clever way of solving it, and it's actually through the Dirac delta function. And it's because of the properties of the Dirac delta function we're able to write it in this way. And if you want to learn more about that, look at my latter videos when I discuss the vector calculus for electromagnetism, because that's where I've done that. So now that we've just looked briefly at Poisson's equation and I've shown you how to solve Poisson's equation, or I've shown you the solution really, let's look at Laplace's equation. So the Laplacian in Cartesian coordinates is del 2 del x squared plus del 2 del y squared plus del 2 del z squared. And the solutions to Laplace's equation are called harmonic functions. So this might bring the next que uh, bring a question to you of how do you actually solve Laplace's equation? So the technique used for solving Laplace's equation is called separation of variables. Separation of variables. And I've done a comprehensive video on separation of variables and it is number 24 in this pr particular series of videos. So that's where you look if you want to see the detailed solution, detailed way of solving uh, Laplace's equation. Now, as an aside by the way, not only does separation of variables work for Laplace's equation, it works for the Schrodinger equation, the wave equation. In actual fact, the reason it works for so many of these is because they're all second order linear differential equations with constant coefficients and separation of uh, variables just works for that sort of equation. So th that technique is very, very important. What that really means is if you can solve Laplace's equation, then you can solve almost all of the equations that you will be, uh, you will encounter in your undergraduate studies, whether it be in mathematics, engineering, chemistry, or physics, or whatever it is. Most of them, I'm not gonna say all of them, uh, that's, that would be unfair. So that's, that's the, the technique. Now, briefly, I'll show you how you do it very briefly now because like I said 24 is where I, I've done all the detail essentially what happens is if you have a function let's say of two variables x and y and let's say it satisfies an equation that looks let's say it satisfies Laplace's equation so grads the, the Laplacian is equal to zero what we do is we assume that the, the your function which is of two variables can be broken down into the product of two functions of only one variable so in this case, we'd assume it's a function of capital X of X and capital Y of Y. And that's, that's it. And you just plug in the derivatives as you require, and it's pretty straightforward. And what you'll get, instead of having one partial differential equation, you'll have instead, instead have two ordinary differential equations with what's called a separation constant relating to two different equations. So that's how you solve it. And I have done three examples in videos 25, uh, no, in videos 20, yeah, 25 through 27, I think is what, what it is. Many you can check them out. I'll, I'll have them online on my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. So anyway, that's, that's how you solve the equation. Now, what I'd like to do next is just discuss the properties of the equation itself. And in order to do this, I'm just going to analyze what happens in one dimension. So let's say, for example, we take the Laplacian of our function v in one dimension, in the x dimension. And of course, that has to be equal to zero for to satisfy Laplace's equation. So clearly, if you have something which whose second derivative goes to zero, its first derivative must be a constant. And if you integrate that, you'll find that the function itself must be a line. Now, the fact that it's a line is coincident. That's not very important. What I'd like to point out are we have two undetermined coefficients. Now this is required because we are solving a second order equation. We need two, uh, two coefficients, two undetermined coefficients, undetermined constants. But what's really interesting here is this. Let's say, for example, we move, our, we move along our solution. So we change our value of x and see what happens. And let's say if, we're, if we cleverly choose our value of x as follows. Let's say if we pick the value of our function at x plus, let's say, a, a constant a. And we compare it with what happens if we take a from our position. I'm just gonna call this one v plus, 
and I'm going to call this one B minus, like this. So this is simply going to be M outside of X plus A plus C, and this is going to be M outside of X minus A plus C. And these are two simultaneous equations. So the solution of this is going to be V plus plus V minus, and it's going to be two outside of mx plus c. But we realize that mx plus c in actual fact is our function that we started with, v, v of x. So this is v of x plus a, this is v of x minus a. So we can rearrange it that we get v of, v of x is a half v of x plus a plus v of x minus a. Now a of course can be any value. What we're actually after finding is that the solution to Poisson's equation v of x is in actual fact the average of the surrounding values. And it is for this reason that Laplace's equation is often referred to as an averaging instruction. So the solutions are really boring in that, in that respect. They're just the average of, of all the other values around. So you might say to yourself, well, that's great. Well, you know, what's the, what's the consequence of that? Well, the consequence of that is very important. It means that a solution, a solution to Laplace's equation is not a local maximum or minimum because Laplace's equation does not allow does not allow local maxima or minima. Now you might ask yourself why is that really important? All I can tell you is that when you're actually talking about physics for example this is this is a very important concept so I can't really say more than that just it's just it's important to know that Laplace's equation is an averaging instruction and that solutions to Laplace's equation cannot be local maxima or minima so if for example you found out that your solution was equal to zero you know that that is the universal minimum okay now Laplace's equation of course can be extended both into the y and z dimensions giving us a three-dimensional passing or three-dimensional Laplace's equation uh, and the solutions of course are more difficult to to uh, to come by and to solve and whatnot but the physics or the the result that the solutions are uh, or Laplace's equation does not allow local maximum and it does not change okay so like so what I'm going to do in the next coming videos is in video 21 I'm going to discuss Earnshaw's theorem in video 22 I'm going to prove the uniqueness theorem the first uniqueness theorem in 22, I'm going to prove the second uniqueness theorem, and that's specifically for electromagnetism. And thereafter, I'm going to discuss separation of variables and the characteristic equation. Okay, so thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also give me a comment in the comment box below.